Last night, for about an hour or so, the internet basically died. At least that's what I was told, because even though I was watching it as it was actually happening, and I was seeing people on Twitter, which is funny to say the internet's dying on Twitter, saying the end is here, and the internet's collapsing, everything's falling apart, but... For the most part, most sites still work perfectly fine. The sites that were really, really affected, they didn't work, but that was only a very small handful of sites. Most other sites that were affected were just having trouble loading up certain elements, because what we suffered from was a CDN outage. So a CDN is a content distribution network. When you have a website, I don't mean something at the scale of like a small blog that has a couple hundred or a couple of thousand visitors a month. I mean something actually big, something the scale of like Twitch or Reddit, something that needs to distribute content all around the world. In that case, you cannot have everyone connecting to the same server and downloading all their content from that server. That just will not work. The server will collapse. So what you want to do is you want to have servers placed all around the world, preferably as close to the users of the site as possible. And then basically these servers act as a cache for content on that website, whether that content be the fonts on the website, the images, videos, things like that. And then all of these cache servers basically make up the CDN. Now, the CDN that was affected is a company known as Fastly. Now, I had literally never heard of Fastly before, but apparently they're as important to the internet as companies like Amazon with AWS and Cloudflare. So what they say, this is basically the only information we have about the problem that occurred, is we identified a service configuration that triggered disruptions across our POPs globally and have disabled that configuration. Our global network is coming back online. Continued status is available at their status website. Now, I don't know exactly what they did, but by the sound of it, I'm guessing they maybe changed some configuration option that wasn't supposed to be changed and that just basically killed everything. Luckily, it was found after about an hour because, as I said before, some pretty big websites were affected. So, websites like Reddit, Spotify, Twitch, PayPal, Stripe, and Hulu were completely shut down. Most of those websites we can live without. No one really cares, like, oh, Reddit's down for an hour. No, that's not a big deal. PayPal and Stripe being down is a much, much bigger problem because when PayPal and Stripe are down, Every single shopping website on the planet is also effectively down. Because even though there are other payment processors, I would have to guess maybe somewhere in the range of 90%, this is a complete guess, but 90% of payments done on the internet would be covered by those two services. And even with just an hour, that is a massive, massive amount of money. Now, I imagine these websites being massive websites probably were using Fastly directly, but a lot of sites were affected even though they weren't directly using it because CDNs have the exact same problem that VPSs and everything else in the cloud space has as well, where the vast majority of providers out there aren't really providers. They're actually just resellers buying AWS servers or Azure servers and then basically just giving you access to the servers on their account. One really weird thing about this is I mentioned Twitch, but Amazon as well, who actually owns Twitch, were both down. Now, this is really weird because Amazon also owns AWS and AWS has a CDN. So why are they using a competitor CDN for their actual website? I really don't understand. And I know that AWS is not just reselling fastly because if that was the case, it would have been a far, far more widespread problem where most of the internet would be down. You would have heard about it from Netflix and pretty much every other website out there. With the sites that were completely down, obviously that would have been kind of annoying, but once you know that it's just not working, you can move on to something else and sort of accept that's the case. Where it was really annoying is with the sites that were sort of half working. I sort of experienced this firsthand with GitHub and because GitHub was having issues, the AUR was having issues as well. What I was trying to do was download a binary release for I think it was the OBS Linux browser. Now, apparently, GitHub uses Fastly to handle CDN distribution of the releases. And because that's the case, and there's a lot of packages on the AUR that basically just pull those down and install them onto your system, effectively, the AUR was broken as well. Now, I wanted to get around this and try out a different version of OBS, maybe on somewhere like Flathub. 
Turns out Flathub completely relies on Fastly as well, and Flathub was completely dead. I'm not sure if the snap store was affected as well. I didn't see any reports about it, but it very well could have been, and no one actually tried to install anything during that hour. Now, this is by no means the first time there's been a massive internet outage like this. So back in 2019, Cloudflare suffered a very similar issue. This knocked out sites like Coinbase, Discord, Shopify, Dropbox, and countless others. 2020, there was an outage with AWS, and when there is ever an outage with AWS, effectively you knock out half of the internet, and there have been countless issues beforehand, and there'll be countless issues after, and you should be seeing sort of an issue here. Even though there are seemingly thousands upon thousands of VPS, CDN, and countless other cloud providers, the vast, vast majority of the traffic is localized to a very small number of services. You could probably count all of the services that matter on maybe two hands. Services like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Cloudflare, Fastly, Akamai, and maybe there's a couple of others, but when any of these services has an outage, there are massive portions of the internet that are completely wiped out. There are definitely a few companies that do have their own infrastructure, and I'll get into one in just a bit, but the reason why these resellers work so well is because you can go on bulk buy-up instances and offer your users a deal. So let's say you start up a VPS company, you're going to call it Bob's VPSs. You buy up 100,000 AWS instances. When you do that, Amazon is going to offer you a lower price than what they would offer someone buying up, say, one or two instances. And when you have that lower overhead, you can effectively offer prices that look similar to what you'd get on Amazon, but by going through a company like that, it makes it seem like you're going away from Amazon, but really you're still entirely attached to it. This leads to the internet being far, far more centralized than it would first look like it really is. If you really want to test out how bad this problem is, there are scripts over on GitHub to go and block out the AWS IP range. Go and do that and see what websites actually work. I would be surprised if you find many things outside of like the Google website, so Google, YouTube, things like that, and the Microsoft websites that actually work. Now, obviously, most individuals don't have the resources or the know-how to go and start up their own server. I don't think we should ever go back to the point where if you want a server on the internet, you have to go and do it yourself. I love that I can go to a company like Linode and spend a couple of dollars and get a VPS up and running in a couple of minutes. That is absolutely amazing. And if you're a company that, say, needs a testing environment and you don't have a spare server sitting around, you just want to start something up really easily, something like that is really, really useful. But the problem is that there are a lot of companies out there, like, say, Netflix, for example, or Hulu, that have the money to have their own infrastructure, but don't go and do so. And it isn't a matter of if it's going to collapse. It is entirely a matter of when, because eventually all PC hardware breaks. Eventually, every system admin, no matter how senior they are at their job, will eventually make some sort of mistake. Maybe they'll forget a comma or include an extra comma, and the configuration just completely breaks. That will happen. And when you don't have your own infrastructure, you don't have any control of when the company decides that needs to start working again. Maybe they'll take an hour, maybe they'll take two, maybe they take an entire day because they have to sort of work out where that problem could actually be. This is a problem that most companies don't want to address anymore and want to instead shift off into the cloud and let someone else deal with it. At some point, the internet has to be centralized and there's no amount of decentralization on the internet using different VPS companies that actually do have their own infrastructure that can actually fix this problem. Because there are only so many satellites and there are only so many undersea lines that if any of those go out, you can't really get around that problem. But this problem, even though it exists below the internet level, does not need to be duplicated on the internet itself. The best part about this is firstly, The Verge was down, which is always a great time to be in. The second best part is that The Verge was using a Google Doc to do their reporting. Now, when they tweeted this link out, the lead editor tweeted out the wrong link. He tweeted out the edit link rather than the view link, and people worked this out very quickly and started just defacing the document. I'm surprised the defacing was fairly light, I would have expected people to start posting pictures of dicks, but 
that's just me, I guess. Now, if you thought I wasn't going to turn this video into a Linode ad, you were absolutely mistaken. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. How affected were you? Did you feel so sad because Reddit was down for an hour and had to, like, I don't know, go outside or something? Let me know in the comment section down below. So that's going to be everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Carl, Mitchell, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bender, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Peter D, Stephen, Tees, Throw, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to support, I'll the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available over on Odyssey. I've also got a gaming channel where I live stream twice a week. That's going to be everything for me, and I'm out.